Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I will be starting my beginner health secure guide. So this is for people who are new to the health community and they don't know exactly where to start or what exactly they're supposed to do. So this is a mini series to help you guys get a better understanding of the proper steps that you should take um, in ensuring that you have like a nice, successful, a smooth process of giving your first hamster. So the first note I'm going to talk about is picking which hamster you would like. Um, it would help if you know exactly which, what hamster that you are wanting. So that way you can learn the characteristics and just how they act um, at their understanding. So you have different hamsters that you could choose from. You have Syrians, Robos, Camp Bell Dwarf, and you also have your Chinese hamster. Now, with each hamster, I'm going to go through and talk about each one very briefly just to give you a smooth, quick overview on each hamster. And hopefully this can help you narrow down a little bit more or maybe it'll possibly help you completely decide which hamster you would like. And these are all of the hamsters, but these are all of your main hamsters that you will um, come across when you're picking at your hamster. The first one I'm going to talk about are your Syrian hamsters. Now these are your larger hamster sizes, and they're also more friendly and outgoing. These are also hamsters that are really easy to tame, just because of their um, just because of their speed being easier to hold, um, because of their size, so it makes it easier to hold them as well. <laughs> and then because they are so friendly, that they just become more easier to tame. So I would definitely recommend Syrian hamsters for beginning. Now the next hamster I'm going to talk about are your dwarf hamsters. Now these come in different forms, so you have your cat dog dwarf, winter white, I'm going to focus on like just those. So these are more small and desert like. Um, so when you do, if you do decide to get one, I would definitely recommend giving them a large area for the thin guys. That's not only large, but also deep, so they can dig in there as much as they want. I had dwarf hamsters before, and I'm telling you right now, they absolutely love their stand. Now these hamsters are also easily frightened. So if you have a lot of young kids, I would definitely um, be more cautious on starting on a dual cancer just because they do scare easily. So this also could make it a little bit more difficult to change due to the fact that if they're scared, they're not going to be handled, so they might become a little bit more nippy. The next cancer are your robo hamsters. These cancers are very <laughs> difficult to change. And I'm only saying that, or to handle, and I'm only saying that because that they're extremely fast and shy and tender. So when you add those up, you can like, you can especially assume that you might have a little bit more difficulty handling them, especially if it is your first time. So I would definitely probably not recommend these for kids just because of their speed or if kids are trying to um, hold them, it might not be very possible for them to. Um, these are also your more active hamsters. Hamster. So this is definitely the kind of hamster you can see running around in your hamster's cage quite often, but they are also typically timid. So of course you can tame them um, to be able to be handled and whatnot, but they, they are also typically timid, so then they're fast, and then they are incredibly small. So this might be a little bit more difficult if you're a beginner and this is your first time having a hamster. Now the last hamster I'm going to talk about are your Chinese hamsters. These are also small hamsters and they're different due to their tails. These hamsters also have like a little bit of speed to them, so this can become difficult when you're trying to handle them. These hamsters can also be nippy, but they also can be quick to pain. But if you are living in one of these, or if you are living in one of these states, I would definitely do research beforehand because they are restricted and or illegal in certain areas. I like you've chosen what kind of hamster you would prefer to have or which ones that you're interested in. Now we're going to talk about your hamster's cage and the accessories. You want six inches of bedding minimum, and this is compacted bedding. Um, so when you're picking up your bedding, no, so when you're putting your bedding in, make sure that you're compacting it down each time you're adding a new layer. You want your bedding to be fluffy and then count with six inches, but does not count. You want your hamster keep walking on it. So once you start putting stuff in, it will naturally compact the bedding down, and you can go from basically like six to eight inches of bedding to looking like you only have like four. So you definitely want to make sure you compact it down. Um, this also will make it easier for your hamster to create burrows. I know a lot of stores 
have so many different options of bedding out there, even online. But some of those beddings aren't safe, even if they do say that um, campers can use it. Um, so I would recommend sticking with paper bedding, aspen bedding, or hemp bedding. I would recommend pine, cedar, scented bedding, no cotton, and then no fabric in their cage. Um, cotton and fabric, it lines up as the same thing, but I didn't want to say cotton in case you could buy like little hamster beds or anything and it may have fabric. So I made sure to mention this as well. Um, when your hamster goes to a you want it to nest on it for their like for their little hideout home, it will get wrapped around in them and it can become very fatal for your hamster. So I would not put that in your cage, don't buy any fluff or anything like that. You also don't want to the bed and get your hamster's cage. You also want to pick out multiple substrates for your hamster's cage. I always say at least have two or three minimum um, different substrates. This also accounts for your main layer of bedding. So you can have the bedding, sand, dirt, grassy bark. Um, you can even have aspen included in there too. Um, some orchard grass hay. Try to mix up their bed, their um, substrates in their cage um, by giving them like small areas of different um, types of substrates. This is also very enriching for your hamster. So you can just put like little dig boxes or create your own little dig areas for your hamster's cage. The next video will be all about your hamster cage. So if you would like to see that, um, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when I upload that. If you would like to hear about hamster noise, I believe I have an old video on it. If I do, then I'll have a link down in the description box below as well. I'm not quite sure, but I think I do. So also, if you would like to see my favorite hamster cages, I will also leave that link down in the description box below. But when I do this next series of video, I'm going to split it to where the first half I'm going to talk about your more inexpensive cages and DIYs. I'm also going to talk about ones that you can just already buy ready but will cost you a bit more of a penny. But thank you all so much for watching, and I will hope to see you all in my next video. Bye. Thank you.